In the past, I've talked a lot about Cold War US light tank prototypes. I haven't really talked about MBTs, so I figured I would talk about the CATTB, the Component Advanced Technology Testbed. I believe it's the strongest M1 Abrams ever built. In 1987, it was conceived by TACOM. They recommended putting all of their advanced tech on one vehicle. This was done not only to mature the technology, but to make it so that once it was actually integrated onto a service vehicle, it would be a much easier process. A standard M1A1 was used as a base. As you can expect, being a component testbed, pretty much every component was changed. One of the biggest changes was to the power pack. The turbine was swapped out for a Cummins 6AV1000. This was a relatively small diesel engine, made for the Advanced Integrated Propulsion System program. It was basically near adiabatic. It used high temperature materials to reduce power loss from cooling, and provided additional energy to the turbocharger. Compared to the original engine, the AGT-1500, it had increased power density and range. It was mounted transversely, coupled to a fully automatic Allison transmission. This saved a ton of space, meaning the engine compartment could be smaller. The next big change was to the gun. Instead of the 120M256, the CATDB used the XM291 cannon. This could be either a 120 or a 140. On the CATDB, I believe it was 140. It was ETC capable. If you don't know what that means, it is basically using plasma to ignite the propellant. This not only makes your ammunition more consistent, but also opens up the pathway to novel propellants. Anyway, it was potentially twice as powerful as the M256. It could depress 10 degrees and elevate 20. When in the 140 configuration, it used two-piece ammo that snapped together. The gun was fed by the XM91 Bustle autoloader. This had 17 ready rounds. Additional magazines were in the hull, placed in the space where the old engine used to be. These magazines could hold 22 to 33 rounds. The entire loading process was automatic, including replenishment. The reload rate varied from 8 to 12 RPM, so a max of 1 round every 5 seconds. The CATTB also had a new turret that used advanced armor. In terms of RHA equivalency, the front had over a meter of kinetic protection. The front sides were also thicker, but in order to save weight, the bustle armor was shaved down. To protect against top attack missiles, the turret also had new roof armor. It was a two-man turret. The loader was not retained. Electronic systems were also improved. It used the standard Army Vectronics architecture, which, to put it simply, was an advanced computer system. It was supposed to be shared by various ground vehicles. Connected to this was a digital fire control system, made by Texas Instruments. It had fire on the move capability, automatic queuing, automatic tracking, automatic zeroing, automatic bore sighting, and fusing for anti-helicopter rounds. Another system was the Vehicle Integrated Defense System, or VIDS, which had two main components, a laser warning system and a radar warning receiver. The laser warning system functioned in a similar fashion to Stora, meaning that once lased it could deploy smoke or point a turret towards the target. And speaking of smoke, the CATTB had an insane amount of smoke grenades. In total it had 64 launchers. The Combat Vehicle Command and Control System was also installed. This allowed for easier input and management of battlefield information. For target engagement, the CATTB had MTAS-1, built by Rockwell. MTAS stands for Multi-Sensor Target Acquisition System. It was basically a millimeter wave radar. It could be used to search for, identify, and engage both tanks and helicopters. It was ideal for situations where the battlefield is obscured by smoke or weather. It worked out to around 5 kilometers. On a normal M1, it would replace the commander's site. The CATDB was also fitted with second-gen thermals. As for more minor features, documents refer to signature reduction. This could refer to the use of radar or thermal absorbent materials. Rubber skirts were also used. This mainly reduced the amount of dust kicked up, but it also hid the road wheels from radar. For the suspension, the torsion bars were replaced with a hydropneumatic suspension system. These were entirely external. Not only did they save space, but they also saved weight and improved cross-country mobility. A single-piece simplified track was used. It was hoped it would increase track life, but I'm not sure how well it actually worked. And as you can imagine, all of this added a good deal of weight. The projected weight was 70 short tons, or about 63 metric. The CATDB obviously never went into service, mostly because it was never supposed to. Anyway, that's pretty much all there is to say about it. If you guys have suggestions for video topics, let me know. I hope this video was somewhat informative, and I'll see you on the next one.